Welcome back guys. Today we're going to learn about data frame selection and indexing. So we're going to use the example that I gave you pre in the previous tutorial. If you've not seen that then I'd advocate that you watch it. So that was how we created a data frame of the English person's favourite discussion piece. We always talk about the weather. Okay, so it was to do with my holiday this weekend, going to Copenhagen. So we've run, we've basically created days vector with Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is descriptive. We had the temperature max and min. We had whether it's going to rain or not is a logical field, true, false, true. And then we created that using the data frame function, days, temperature, min, temperature max, etc. So I'm going to run all that code now. This all then appears in my values field. So these are my vectors. This is my data frame. So temperature, min, temperature max, to rain or not to rain. So now what I'm going to do is say, give me everything from their second second row. So return everything from the second row. So I'm going to use Copenhagen weather and I'm going to use my square brackets notation similar to the matrix um, end if we you saw it but to return rows, rows are first, columns are second but you also need to include a comma so I'm only returning rows, so I'm going to leave the the to the right blank. So the first row, I want to the second row, though, didn't I? Everything from the second row will be Saturday. It gives me the day name, the temperature, maximum min, and whether it's going to rain or not. So we know that that's going to be the one dry day. I wanted um, everything from the second column which will be temperature min. I'd use Copenhagen weather, which is my data frame. I'd use the notation again with the square brackets, but then I'd say, actually, I'd put my two at the end of it, because it's row column, remember? So it gives me everything from the second column. If we go back to our main data frame, Copenhagen weather, and I print that. You don't really need to use print, but I like to use it for convention. So if I print that, everything from the second row is 131. So that links into what's been returned there. So that's selecting elements using indexing, so the actual index number. Now let's select, select some elements based on their column name. So we're going to use Copenhagen weather again. And this time, because the columns are at the end, we're not going to specify row here. We're going to use column. And we're going to say return the, the column name. So let's say we want the temperature, temperature min. So it give me everything with the temperature min, which is the same thing as what we've done previously is the second column temperature min but referring to it as the column name gives you the same result so we could say also I want to see to rain or more not to rain nice little long column name for you and it gives you the list of values there using the slicing notation so the semicolon we could say give me the first Two, two rows so first two rows and I want to select certain columns as well so give me the first two rows and select temperature min and max only so to do that I'm going to use a, um, a mixture of um, indexing and slicing to achieve that so Copenhagen weather so I'm going to open up my index 
I'm going to say the first, did we say the first two, didn't we? And then I'm going to say, I'm going to use a vector to specify the names of the columns that I want to return. So it's going to be temperature min. And then I'm going to use comma temperature max. So it will give me Friday and Saturday for those. It will give me that, essentially. So if I run that, see what that does. Basic, great. That's exactly what I wanted. So it's given the first two, so that's Friday and Saturday. What's the minimum temperature? What's the maximum temperature? Again, as we touched on in the previous example, if I want to select just a column, I'd use my data frame, Copenhagen weather. I'd use the dollar sign notation, and I can just then simply, instead of having to index or slice, I can say return me everything from that. So true, false, true, we'll do that again. Dollar sign, let's do the min. Gives me everything that's on the min. Gives me the days as well. Okay, with three levels. Another way to achieve this, so all that would be to do this. Let's just do this and segment it off. So Copenhagen weather, we'd open up our index notation brackets and we just say days, which are both, they both should give you the same result. Yep, that gives you it as a factor, that gives you it as a list of items. But essentially they both return the same. You can also filter based on subsets of your data. So as we haven't got a massive sub, um, as we haven't got a massive set of data, then it's not going to be that useful. But if you had loads and loads of data, which you know, and with certain values, then it would be really useful. So filter with subset function. So here we're going to open up subset. I'm going to open up my parentheses. I'm going to pass the name of my data frame, Copenhagen weather. And then I'm going to use the subset equal to. So get me a subset equal to where to rain or not to rain um, is equal to. Uh, I'm going to say just give me the days that where it is going to rain because I want to know if I'm going to take a jacket or not. So yeah, that that basically is created now a subset of my data. Um, you could also do something like um, subset where Copenhagen weather subset equals uh, maximum temperature. Temperature max is greater than five. Okay. You're then using it's because we know that that's a numerical field. We we can subset that. So yeah, that's going to give you Saturday and Sunday. So saying that Friday's the really cold day because that's five degrees maximum. So actually, greater than five would be those other two days. If I then actually change this to greater than six and rerun that line, it'll be one. So I could then what I could do from this. I've also got a subset, but what's the power of it is I can create a copy of the data frame as a subset. So nice Copenhagen weather. And this creates a data frame. So if I use my notation to create a placeholder, which is the arrow, always pointing to the description, and then that's the condition at the other side of it. So if I run that line, I've now got one observation of four variables. And that's now my nice Copenhagen weather compared to everything that I've got there. So yeah, you can then store that in memory, and then that can be that can be summarised. Oops, sorry, not summarised. I meant to summary. It'll give you just one value, but it'll give you the summary 
of just that one which is not really that useful but you can do other functions with it okay so that's how we'd create a subset of the data frame that we've just created so we did it whether it's going to rain so when it was going to rain and with a nice warm temperature um, so say I wanted to define an order in my data frame so let's say let's order a data frame let's say sort by sorted max temp uh, we're going to use the order function and we're going to say Copenhagen weather and we're going to use the notation to refer to the temperature temperature max field I'm going to now have a look at sorted temp max temp that's not quite worked the way I wanted it to work there's something that I've not done right oh yeah yeah okay this is how I need to then pass it sorry I'm not going to return that I'm going to say then in Copenhagen weather index sorted temp max temp I'm not doing it by columns, I'm doing it by rows. So I'm sorting by rows. That's why it's at the left. Otherwise, if it was the columns, it'd be on the right. That's right, brilliant. So it gives me the sort based on the max temperature, which then it basically puts Friday, Sunday, and Saturday out of order. But it means actually my temperature on Saturday is going to be great. Um, and it's not a rain, which is cool. Okay, so that 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 get, did, it, did it in nice ascending order, but I want to do it in descending order now. Oh, I've got quite a weird notation for doing this, so I'm going to do exactly the same as my descend sorted max temp, creating another placeholder there. I'm going to use the order command again. But this time, I'm going to use take away Copenhagen weather. It's not actually subtraction, but that's how you have to do it. Temperature max. So that will do. That will store that in memory. Then I need to then pass that again, the same way I did before, as an index item, and then it's by row. So it gives me, it should have given me a descended sort then. Ah, that's why. Wrong variable. Silly man. It's descended sorted max temp that we're now doing, not the sorted max temp. I'd passed the wrong variable there. But yeah, then it gives it in descending sort. Weird, you have to put a takeaway symbol or a subtraction but that's just the way you have to do it unfortunately um, but yeah essentially to conclude previously we created the data frame and went into uh, looking at how we put these vectors into a data frame using the data frame command we did some indexing we then did a mixture of slicing and indexing by name so we then looked at referring to things by name instead of the numerical index value. We did it with the dollar sign, so we looked at um, returning single fields. We used the subset function to do it based on conditions, so whether it rains or not, whether the max temperature is greater than 6. And then we did ascending and descending ordering of a certain field within that data frame. So thanks guys, uh, please subscribe, um, check out Hudson's Hacks um, and I'll see you on the next tutorial. Thank you.